this is what it looks like at the VIS. This is what we do every single day. We do anything from synthetic biology to mechanics to software engineering to programming to even art and science, entrepreneurship, starting new companies, and so on. But we think that there is an underlying greater understanding of the human body that we can arrive at if we uh, find out about, <coughs> use alternative medicine to help us look at the body a little bit in a different in, way. In addition to traditional exercises and balance training, we've moved to other types of exercises. And um, much like the VIS goes to look into nature to inspire technology, as Elena said in her talk, we look to the East and we look to other cultures to say what's in there that we can integrate with our Western knowledge of physiology into new therapies or how do we re, um, um, make available more traditional therapies uh, to address these contemporary issues. When we look at this lab, um, we have the most cutting edge research tools available to us to measure human movement. We can measure how the body moves through space and interacts with its environment. We can measure the forces that act on the human body. And we can even measure the function of some of the underlying tissues. If you can measure balance, you can ask the question about what techniques, what therapies help improve your balance the most. You can ask questions like low back pain. What kind of influence is the function of connective tissue and the function of muscle in low back pain. So, um, there's a motion capture system which uses infrared light cameras and you can see those all around the outside of the room. And they work with just a reflective marker. It's kind of a simple system. Um, the infrared light reflects off of this reflective marker back into the camera view, and then it can measure the position of this reflective marker anywhere in space. So this is just a child with lots of reflective markers on them, and he's kind of just doing a funny dance. <laughs> to give you an idea of all the different directions that we can measure. And this is what you get from following the reflective markers. There's several force platforms in the room. Um, these two here in the floor um, are in an overground track, um, so you can walk um, past them overground. And backward, and right side, and left side. Perfect. You're looking at that screen. So you can stop that. So that trace is what we call a stabilogram. technology that we're going to use is the ultrasound machine. And so this is a picture of Sarah's back. And you can see how here, just to orient you, that white layer at the top is the skin. Underneath is a tiny little amount of subcutaneous fat, not a lot here. <laughs> and then underneath, we have this white layer, which is quite prominent, and that's the connective tissue. The table is going up and down. And Hopefully you can see that the layers of connective tissue are moving past one another. That box. This is somebody who has no back pain. It looks very much like what Sarah looked like, right? You see how there's the, um, the sliding of these layers, one relative to the other, that's quite easy to see. Now I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you somebody who has back pain. This person, you see the sliding, everybody see this, is not as nice. People who have chronic back pain don't have as much sliding than people who uh, don't have back pain by quite a big difference. Okay. So this is with a, a fairly stable base of support. So ready, set, go. And just be as still and comfortable as you can. Okay. So now we're going to change the base of support and make it more challenging. So this is going to be the Marcel Marceau stance. And you're going to be imagining you're a little bit like you're on a tightrope. Ready, set, go. OK, 
Okay, does it look different? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So hypothesis one, basis support changes things. These plots um, here are from a study with people who've had vestibular uh, damage, the inner ear nerve. Um, some of them had tumors that were cut out, and therefore the vestibular was completely removed. Others had head trauma, and that's a big part. This plot on the left here are people moving in the front to back or left to right plane before they started Tai Chi. This is 10 weeks later. How do you think these practices might be able to help to transform the way medicine is practiced in the future? What are things that really you take away from this in terms of what the future of medicine might look like? How expensive is this apparatus? Could you, can you foresee that in five years, every neighborhood clinic could have something like this. How do you see <coughs> the learning that you do from this? I mean, there are some people embrace Tai Chi and yoga and some scans of it. How do you see that um, being adopted in conventional medicine?